Hello, YouTube. This is Warren Marshall. And I thought you know, an interesting exercise would be to take somebody else's high poly model, tear it down low poly, do the UVs and do the basic bakes and just show you how I, I would approach a mesh that I'm not uh, completely familiar with, you know, because you being a freelancer working at home on my own stuff. I never really have to interact with anybody else's stuff. So when I'm building a high poly mesh, I'm usually building it with a forward vision towards you know the work I know I have to do you know, in the end, which is the low poly and the UVs. So a user on my Discord chat, Scott Pierce, created this high poly uh, guitar pedal mesh. And you know, we're gonna look at it here in a second. We'll, you know, we'll talk about the approach and then we'll dive in and tear it apart. So I'm going to approach this like uh, I was assigned this mesh. You know, uh, you know, the art director came and said, "Hey, we need you to low poly this mesh, and you know, get it into the game." You know, it was built by some external contractor, whatever. You know, some jerk like me built it. So, so looking at this, I can see that we've got some some buttons that are clearly instanced. We got some uh, you know, some other repetitive elements like these little lights. We've got these socket things that actually are pushed into the surface, they're cut in. And I think we're gonna keep that in the low poly because I want to be able to, um, let's pretend that this prop is intended for like the player's inventory. So they're gonna be able to pick it up like this, so it be this close and sort of spin it around and look at it and for whatever reason. Now, these things, one is, is subdivided. One's got kind of a rounded top and one kind of doesn't have a rounded top. I'm gonna actually treat these two as the same just because it's it's my video and I'll do what I want. So we're gonna do that, just treat these as the same. We'll instance them. And uh, screw heads on the bottom will bake out flat. Okay, this doesn't look like a ton of work. So good. So next up, we're gonna start the uh, low poly process. So there's one more thing I need to do. I had forgotten to cover this already, but you know, being asked to work on somebody else's mesh, that doesn't mean that I have to live with their moto file. I can make my own moto file up. And I've covered this in past videos and I'll put a card up here, but I have a default scene that I use. And my default scene has stuff in it that I like to use for rendering and for, you know, in materials like you know you can see down here like my low poly mesh and my different you know, rounded edge settings and that kind of stuff so moving this mesh that i've been asked to low poly into my scene where i'm comfortable it seems like a reasonable thing to do so i don't think we're really bending the rules here and i'm going to delete his shaders because it doesn't really matter he seems he's um He's got everything rounded off and smoothed out already, so we're probably not even gonna have to use the rounded edge shader in here. So this should just work. Okay, so it's in my default, it's in my default scene. Everything is intact where it should be. And a quick render test shows me that I, I can get a good render out of it. Lighting, everything looks good. Okay. Oh, there's some weirdness here, but I'll bet that's because if I grab this mesh and check the material on it, that's using the default material, which has a, a rounded edge. So I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna kill the rounded edge on my different materials here. Cause I think that his stuff is just ready to go the way it is. And I don't need to do any of that. Yeah, that gets rid of the weird splooge. Okay. I might throw the rounded edge on these on these thread loops, but we'll see how that goes. So now we're ready to move on to the actual low poly. Okay, so to finally begin to actually work on this, um, what I need to do is I need to 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 explode the mesh out somewhat. Uh, the way that I like to work with a high poly mesh is that if something was built as a separate piece. You know, in real life, I try to make it a separate piece on the high poly. Not 100%, but you'll, you'll get what I'm driving at, or you'll see what I'm driving at here in a minute. Now, 
uh, one thing I did notice just before I started recording is that there's a bunch of, um, there's this shading artifact that's right across the middle of the mesh. You can see that, I think. And then on the bottom, there's a lot of shading problems. And this is because, you know, it's understandable because this is one huge N-GON that's been subtracted out of. And, you know, Moda's doing what it can, but it's not a miracle worker. Now the ways to fix that are, say for example, I pick this top face and I just, you know, I hit it with a quad, you know, hit it with quad so it connects all these edges over here and then uh, once I get done hitting the wrong keys, you see that fixes that shading error here. But that's not always viable. And honestly, um, this is kind of a case for face weighted normals. Uh, they're not just for normal map baking. So let's take a look. So uh, if I grab this face and I do a, you know, a, a material select, I can see that I'm on my default material. So I'm going to just turn on a weight by polygon area. And that has cleared up the shading issue. Um, that's the cheapest fix for this kind of thing. And you can see on the bottom too, we've, you know, we've, cleared, all, we've cleared all this up too. What that is basically saying is that you can read up on it in the documentation, but what that's saying is that the larger the polygon is, the more weight uh, it carries in terms of its vertex normal uh, influence. So small faces on the edges will have a small amount of influence and large faces will have a big one. So if you have a, a long flat face with a couple little bubbles on the edges, that large flat face will be dominating the vertex normal, which will be pointing up and smooth and all that. You'll have to experiment with it a little bit. And it's not a cure-all for everything, but it does fix lots of stuff, you know, in a quick way, which is uh, often good for production work. So anyway, with that straightened out, there is one other thing I wanted to do here. These screw heads on the bottom, um, since I'm not gonna be stamping those on as substance painter, they're actually uh, geometry. I don't like it when um, screw heads are all align the same way. It's just like a pet peeve of mine. So what I'm going to do is just hit each one with just a, just grab it, turn on rotation, is give it a random pull. So they all kind of look like they've been, you know, screwed in on different angles and stuff. It, it's a small thing, but it does add to the believability of it. Now that's actually a problem that we run into here because on these buttons, they have a screw that stabilizes or whatever is happening here, but these are instanced. So they're all gonna have to have the same screw orientation. That's just something we'll live with, uh, but I'll show you a way that we can visually min uh, minimize that when it comes time to actually do the bait or the, uh, the low poly. So uh, I said we were gonna explode the mesh and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so when I say um, explode the mesh, I just mean move elements uh, away from each other that I want to bake separately. So in the case of this, what I what I will do is I will uh, I'll make a duplicate hierarchy of the original high poly mesh and just turn that off, and then I'll usually call this something like high poly the underscore x, just you know uh, x for exploded. So um, so once that's done, I typically will, uh, t you know, take instances and delete them. Hold on, uh, I want to look at one thing. That's empty with an inset. That's a prong, and okay, so that's okay. This is the same up both sides. Okay. Um, sorry. Getting back to it, I will grab instances and just delete them because I don't need them. Uh, I'll grab something like this and I will drag it upwards, let's say. Now we're not gonna use this part on the bottom, that's obviously not, not visible. And when I drag things up, I tend to try to do it you know, in a predictable step. So in this case, I'll say like five. And you'll see why that happens later on once we start you know, uh, working on the low poly. But I'm gonna take the, the toggler thing and push that up another five. So it's separated. Okay, then I'm gonna grab now these two, I'm gonna, I said previously these two were gonna be the same and I guess I'm, I'm still gonna stick with that call. So I'm gonna delete 
the polygons from this one because I don't care about them. And then this mesh is going to, let's say, move this direction by negative five, you know, positive, negative, it doesn't matter. And we're going to probably low poly that as, as, as one, one piece, one cohesive shell. This light is actually duplicated, so I'm going to delete it and then take the remaining light and shove it up in the air and by five, this handle can go over here by five. Now, obviously the amount that I'm moving this stuff depends on the size of your mesh. This mesh is actually pretty small. Um, I was surprised when I started looking at it, but uh, that's fine. You just have to work at a smaller scale. If it was a huge mesh, I'd probably be moving by a meter or like you know, 100 units instead of five, but yeah, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. As long as you can uh, scale it up in the game engine, it's irrelevant. All right, this little piece, I'm going to... Well, I'll move it this way by 10, which is you know just a multiple of five. That just makes it easy to keep track of things. And shove you over by negative 10. Now, I'm not going to close these holes up because I want to remind myself that the low poly needs holes because these do have depth that we're going to keep because I want to, you know, have that be in the, uh, uh, the low poly prop. Okay, so with all that stuff exploded out, this, this becomes my new high poly mesh. Let me just save that before something dumb happens. Um, okay, so from here, I'm going to uh, start building out the low poly.